Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Hawk Sign of Black in again asking you to hit that like. I mean, asking you to hit that share button uh, because sharing benefits us. Like and subscribe bene uh, benefit me, but the message is more important than the messenger. Now, to my subscribers, thanks a million. Shout out again because when you subscribed, you did it uh, out of the goodness of your heart, not because I requested it. Um, I was recording this message a few minutes ago, and guess what happened? I was talking about the double standard that works against men. BGS pointed to this. He ranted about it just a little while ago. He ranted, uh, uh, well, I think it was yesterday that he ranted about it. And he said in his rant, it's a double standard. When men are expected to provide protection for nothing at all, not even in exchange for cooperation, just it's owed. And women owe men nothing at all. Don't need no man, don't want no man. I'm going to tell you now, what is, as I was recording, this is about eight minutes ago. I stopped recording and I had to erase that one because around the corner came a colleague of mine, a lady teacher. Soon as she came around the corner and saw me, she said, oh my goodness, just in time. This guy's following me and she pointed at a car that was behind her. And when, uh, when I stepped to that car, he took off. I didn't get close enough to see the tag number because it's nighttime here as I'm recording this. But that man hauled behind. He went down a street. Made a right turn, came back up. I could see him down another street because I was standing at a corner. I began to walk towards the car again to make sure it was the same car. He was facing us, but he made a left turn and got the, uh, got the F out of there. So, this being said, uh, I tried again to intercept him and get the tag number, but he passed by too quickly for me to get a tag number. Now, we have a police presence outside of our building. The thing is that you can tell them these things, but in order for this to go anywhere, you have to have a tag number. And we couldn't, I was trying to get the tag number and I couldn't. So I didn't even mention anything to the police officers because uh, I wouldn't be able to give them the tag number in the first place. So that being said, um, yeah, that being said, I was recording how you cannot sit up here and tell us that we owe you protection, but you owe us nothing at all. You don't even owe us uh, a thank you. Because you're strong and independent, don't need no man for nothing. And around the corner came a white lady. And she's one of the nice ones. Matter of fact, she took this job to get away from her racist family back in the States. But anyway, she took the job, she came here, got followed this evening as she was going out for a walk and some exercise. And she straight up said, yeah, black and bald, my hero. I mean, not in that, she used my name, but she thanked me profusely. And I'm going to see exactly what the results are. I'm going to see how much she shows in terms of appreciation. Maybe she brings something to, uh, to feed me. Maybe she brings a snack. Maybe she simply spreads the word. Blackheart defends folks. Maybe so. But as I was recording and about to tell sisters, either we owe each other or we do not owe each other. It's one or the other. Something must be in exchange for this protection. A white lady came around. And you know how I am about them, and I still defended her. What do you think I would have done if a sister came around the corner? I can tell you what I would have done, because if you think that I am in favor of just completely abandoning black women because they're black and their hair is nappy and their noses are wide and their lips are big and their booties are big, let me tell you what happened before I started to really, really, really record a lot of stuff on my channel. Let me tell you what happened two years ago. This month, two years ago, female teachers recorded that some Uber drivers were trying to flirt. Some Uber drivers were not trying to flirt and they were just doing their jobs. 
some of these female teachers um, were black, some of them were white. I had a night job, I was teaching some students. Of course, all my students are males. I found out that one of them drove for Uber and one of the competitors, and I straight said to him, listen, check this out, blood. This is what I'm gonna do. Spread the word to the other Uber drivers, please. If, if they say another word out of pocket to a black teacher, we're fighting. I've already instructed the black teachers to take down tag numbers of the drivers, turn them into the cops, and then let me know. And the word got out that this bald-headed black American man was gunning for anybody that said any inappropriate word to any of the black lady teachers. This, I did not extend this protection to any of the white lady teachers. I did not extend it to the Palestinian lady teacher. I did not extend this protection to anybody except for black lady teachers, regardless of their nationalities. If they were black American, black British, black South African, black Canadian, any of them, if anything was said to any of them, it was going to be a fight. Any driver that did not disrespect any black female teacher did not have to worry about me. I've already done this. So if anything, I've actually been a hypocrite. I've sat up here and said, don't expect protection in exchange for nothing. And I've turned around and offered it even to a woman from the background that I don't look up to. If I had caught the guy, I would have told him, you stop giving it away for free. You stop trying to find an avenue to give this stuff away. There's nothing uh, about you just because you're a man and you've got a dingling that makes you inherently less valuable. You don't owe it to any woman to chase them down and offer them a penis. And I would have been considered crazy in the West for telling this to a man. You're talking like a girl. Uh, no, I'm talking like we're equal. I'm talking like our values are equal. That's what I'm talking like. And if we're equal and our values are equal, then there's nothing about him that is so bad that he should have to drive around and harass women trying to give way to dingling. I would have used violence if he decided to use violence. That's it. But I would have told him, you walking around here doing all of this, giving it away for free, you were, uh, I would have used the Arabic word for a slut or a bitch, but I would have used the masculine form. You're a male slut. And if you never got none, that makes it even worse because you keep trying. Yeah, we can talk about the nature of men. How what I'm saying does not jive with the nature of men. Exactly. So ladies, what you've been saying does not jive with the nature of women as a whole. I don't need no man for nothing. And I don't owe no man nothing even if he does protect me and pays my bills. Hell, I don't owe him nothing if he marries me, protects me, and pays my bills. That's the message that these men are getting. And that's exactly why it is that a lot of men are saying there's no reason to get married. We get married, I owe her, but she doesn't owe me. If I date her, I owe her, and she doesn't owe me. If I just want to date her, I owe her, and she does not owe me. It's always one-sided. What the hell kind of deal is that? I'll go somewhere where there's a mutual uh, debt. That's what I'll do. And these men are doing it. Now, this kid that followed her was probably 20 years old telling her, hey, why don't you come get in this car? And she was scared. I believe that she was actually followed. I do believe it. And I don't know what this kid was thinking. You're going to follow a strange woman from the West that you don't know. You think she's going to get in the car with you just because she's a Western woman? No, that ain't the way that works. Even if she was going to get in the car with a strange man, she was going to get in the car with a strange Western man that knows a lot about women. She can smell other women on him. When a man from here follows, approaches, and harasses a woman, she can't smell other women on him, so she's not going to want to be with him. And I would have red-pilled this man. I would have told him, you want to know the psychology of women? 
Come back later. I'm going to give you the game. So yes, I was willing to defend her. Yes, I was. But don't get it twisted. Had I caught this man and he did not use violence, I would not have had to use violence. He would have already been too scared to do it because he got busted. And the cops are nearby. But I would have red-pilled this man. And if I red-pilled one of them in Arabic, best believe this type of thing is going to spread. Believe that. Because right now, with their suffering with their own women, they think nobody can understand. They can't get us to understand. They really believe that. Oh, man, if I caught this man and told him that's what we're going through, he would have said, hold up. You mean to tell me it's like this? Anywhere where there's a developed economy, I'd have been like, yep, exactly. So take your behind. Get a, you know, get a skill that's valuable. Take your butt somewhere to a third world nation. Find a way to make some money. You can do it because you're from a first world nation, a developed nation. Earn some money and you'll run through them like hot butter. If you, what you want is to marry them, you'll be marrying two, three or four of them and running through them halal like hot butter. But what you will not be doing is sitting up here being limited to what they say you deserve and they don't know you. Then on top of that, accepting a deal in which you owe them and you pay them and you take care of them and you protect them and they still act like they don't owe you nothing. You ain't going to accept a deal like that. That's not going to happen. This is how bad it's got to be, though. So before you think I'm really just cold and heartless, what I'm telling you is for your own good. When it came down to it, I was ready to defend a woman from the group of people I don't have no allegiance to and am and, and glad to see them suffer. And it had a lot to do with who this particular individual was, too. She's not part of the problem. She's not a racist. Um, I don't think she's fully conscious, but she ain't no racist. She doesn't mean anybody any harm. I've been a neighbor for a while. She's been very well behaved and very egalitarian to people. My wife has worked with her and said she's great to work with. So uh, I've actually, actually been a little bit hypocritical myself even though I was recording something about a double standard when all this happened. Because I've been sitting up here telling uh, I'm been sitting up here saying, drive this message home. But when it came down to it, even I was willing to lend a helping hand. And had this dude gotten out and gotten violent, he would have been dealt with. Because these niggas don't know how to fight. That doesn't happen. If he had gotten out and pulled out a machete, he still would have gotten dealt with not to cut him up with his own machete. But not only that, here's the other thing. Although I don't know what the rewards would have been for defending her. I'm not really sure. I do know that the society itself would have sided with me against him as long as there was any evidence. And his proximity to her and me and her witness statement and the security camera's footage around our building would have shown what was going on. So I can say this, it would not have been like in the States where I would have just been told, oh, you just, you were just doing what you're supposed to do. You ain't nobody special. While my arms are cut, you know, cut and shredded up from a machete or whatever the hell else. That wouldn't have been the case. Hell, if the story got famous enough, I probably would have been granted citizenship. Been allowed to stay here forever. Another passport. Would have had my old age taken care of. What would have happened if I had done this in, for a sister back in the States? And I would have been willing to do it, actually. But what would have happened if I had done it for a sister back in the States? I'd have just got dealt with. And there would have been no rewards, not even any appreciation, no thank you. I probably would have been friend-zoned for it. Even if I wasn't trying to get with her, I probably would have been pro and preactively and preemptively friend-zoned. Oh, you my play brother. I'm your play brother. No, you my play second wife. How about that? I would have had to act like this after defending someone to drive the point home that I'm not a community eunuch. Just because I did something out the goodness of my heart with little goodness God put in my black heart does not mean that I'm a community eunuch. And you get to preemptively castrate me just because your type is the one that was chasing after your butt in the first place. This is a serious argument we have about this protection thing. Ladies, get together the same way you got together and decided that 
good guys are no good, uh, good guys are not attractive in the community. Get together that way, however you did it. Come to a meeting of your minds and determine what is in it for us to protect you. And you'll find it again. You find the protection again. I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Black heart sign of blackout. Assalamu alaikum.